Hello everyone and welcome to Mole Hill Mountain episode 261. Hi, I'm Andrew. Nice to meet you. So, I am sad, very sad, because it appears there will no longer be any Chucky for me. As I've been speaking about for the past couple of podcasts, uh, the new Chucky, based on, you know, Chucky the Killer Doll from the Child's Play franchise, has a new television series. And uh, I was delighted to find that uh, USA Network and Siffy uh, put the episodes uh, on their respective uh, platforms where I could watch. Because I don't have TV, you see. Well, I have a TV. I don't have TV. I don't have cable. I don't even have an antenna. I can't get local stations. Which is fine because there's really nothing on cable television I'm interested in watching. Which is why I don't pay for cable. Even though, well, there's Chucky. But I'm not paying, I don't know what it is, $60, $70 a month for cable for one weekly television series that's eight episodes long. Lindy, happy Halloween to you too. Uh, Lindy comes to us from the future, where it's already Halloween. Although, I did go shopping earlier today, and I saw Wonder Woman. Pretty good Wonder Woman costume. And I sat there in my car at the stoplight going, Oh no. Did I get the day wrong? Is it Sunday? Did, did I miss the podcast? Did I forget to... Did I not do the Sunday stream today? No, it's it's Saturday. Maybe she's going to a Halloween party this here Saturday night with three friends who are not in costumes. Maybe she just likes dressing as Wonder Woman. I mean, who doesn't? It's a cool outfit. So I went to the store and I thought, you know, maybe I'll get some Halloween treats for myself. But I couldn't find any Halloween treats. I don't know, maybe they were all hiding behind the Christmas stuff. No problem finding Christmas stuff. I don't begrudge the fact that there's Christmas stuff out already. I do, actually, I do. Um, I will say that I'm happy that no one is playing any Christmas carols yet. You do not, you do not play Christmas carols until at least after Thanksgiving. You have to wait until after Thanksgiving, at least. So says this guy. Um, but I did get something neat, show and tell time. So I got some neat stuff. That's a little Halloweeny. These uh, little macaroni things are pumpkin shaped, kind of, and some of them are orange. I have never had this before. It's vegan. I I don't know what that means. It it's macaroni. So I bought butternut squash pasta. <laughs> that sounds interesting. So I'll make myself a little shrimp pasta dish. There's no need for me to go grab the shrimp out of my fridge. It's it's just shrimp. <laughs> so some shrimp and some veg. Make myself a pasta. I also bought some um, this bread here, which I've never tried before. Uh, to make some garlic bread. So, so that's that's what's on my menu for tomorrow night. Um, let me just put this food stuff on my couch, which is a great place to put food stuffs. Chicago, hello. All right, what was I talking about? Chucky, right, Chucky. 
So, uh, the first episode of Chucky was on both USA and Siffy's uh, platforms where I could watch them, which was nice. And uh, didn't even have to wait a week. They were just there. So, awesome. And I was thinking, are they going to do the thing where they just have the first episode and that, you know, just to compel you to buy cable to watch one eight episode television series? Hope not. Well, the second week I was pleasantly surprised to see that episode two was on both their platforms where I could watch it and enjoy the splendor that is the television show based on the Child's Play franchise about a killer doll. I like quality shows. Um, well, this week was episode three and it was not made available on sci-fi or USA Network's uh, channels, their, their websites or their uh, YouTube channels. Maybe they're doing the thing where, okay, the, you get the first two on time, but subsequent episodes you're going to have to wait a week if you want to watch them for free on our website. Maybe they're doing that. I hope. Or maybe uh, I don't get to watch the rest of the show. Because, again, I don't have cable. And that makes me very sad, because I enjoyed the first two episodes, and I would like to watch the last six. But I am not willing to pay, I don't know what it is, $60, $70 for cable just to watch the last six episodes of Chucky, so... Maybe I'll get to see the rest of it someday. Darn. So, um, Facebook is, um, as a company and uh, the people who do not care how much harm uh, their platform um, causes, when you platform um, bigotry and hatred and um, uh, willful disinformation, you cause real world tangible quantitative harm but facebook can sell ads on it so facebook doesn't care which is less than ideal so like-minded folks have been yelling at Facebook for years to say, Hey, it's cool seeing people's, you know, pictures of their dogs and the food that they eat before they eat it. The pictures of the food after you eat it, not as fun to look at, but the pics of your food before you eat it is fine. Knowing what restaurant someone checked into. That's that's great. Facebook is wonderful because now I know when everybody's birthday is. The day of. So I, I, I can seem like a really good friend who's on the ball and remembers your birthday. These are all good things. These are all things that Facebook could sell ads on if it really wanted, you know, but, um, yeah. So people have been complaining to Facebook, hey, all that stuff is great, but, you know, maybe uh, don't platform hate speech and disinformation that gets people hurt, possibly killed. Maybe... Maybe don't do that. Even if it even even if it makes you a lot of money. Even if it makes you a lot of money, maybe don't do that. Needless to say, Facebook has been under a lot of pressure to improve. You know, what with platforming all the hate speech and uh, willful disinformation that causes real world tangible measurable harm. Well, Facebook and the people that run it who are not sociopathic monsters have decided, you know what? God damn it! We're gonna do something about this! We have heard your cries! And so today, Facebook Inc. is going to, yes, yes, deplatform hate speech and harmful misinformation? Oh no, we're changing our name. Because the Facebook name is 
just really toxic, so we're going to change our name to Meta. And we're going to sue everyone that tries to use it in any context. Facebook, I'm sorry, Meta didn't say that. That's just a guess on my part. Yeah, Facebook Inc., the uh, holding company that owns uh, Facebook, Instagram, and a slew of other things, decided to address the issues of platforming um, hate speech and harmful disinformation by changing its name to something other than Facebook because it thinks we're really, really stupid and a good chunk of the population actually is. Does that solve any of the problems? No, 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 no it doesn't. That's... I am reminded of my high school days where the school would um, survey the student body on the direction the school should take in various uh, endeavors. Like, should we do this? Should we do that? Do you like this? Do you like that? The school was often listening to the students and asking the students, what do you think? What would you like? What would work for you? And we told them. And they ignored everything we said and did what they were going to do in the first place. It's kind of like companies who... Um, do uh, who uh, advertise uh, open job positions that they already know they're going to fill with someone internally because they have to they, they have to even though they know they're, they're, they're not actually hiring outside of the company they know exactly who they're hiring yeah, that thing, I hate that I always hate it when the because it's like Back to the school thing. If you don't give the slightest shit what I think, don't ask. I mean, if you genuinely don't care what we think, stop asking. It's a waste of our time. It's a waste of both of our time. Granted, I'd prefer you actually care about what we think. So yeah, Facebook has decided to, um, uh, Facebook has seen the mess it has made, and instead of cleaning it up, it has decided to lift up a rug and sweep it right on under there. It's a big mess. Is it gonna, you know, seep through the rug it just got swept under? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Immediately. So, um... So let's move on to cheerier topics, because, huh. um, so hey, uh, the, uh, the teaser trailer for Lightyear of the of the Michigan Buzzes um, premiered sometime this week, and I watched it. So this is something we heard about uh, a while back, that uh, Pixar was making a movie based on Buzz Lightyear from the Toy Story movies. But this was going to be the story of the actual guy, Buzz Lightyear, that the toy is based on. So I'd wondered, I'm like, okay, so was in the world of Toy Story... Was Buzz Lightyear, like, a real guy? And they just made action figures based on him? I mean... That's weird. I mean, you know, okay, fine. But in the, in the um, Lightyear trailer, it appears that futuristic spaceships and lasers and aliens and stuff exist. So, probably not. 
right? Because that technology doesn't seem to exist in the 90s era Toy Story. Unless everyone is very cool. It's like Andy and his mom, they just live in a quiet suburb that's just not really that interested in um, the fact that we now have uh, interstellar travel and have met aliens. And none of the cool technology that was uh, developed for interstellar travel has made its way down to anything. Historically, not how that has worked, but... Uh, hmm. So, in the um, world of Toy Story, is this a movie that's based on the toy franchise? See... Here's my guess. Andy. He grew up. He's now my age. Maybe a little bit younger. He's in his 30s. Uh, Chicago says maybe the toy is based on a TV series in the show. Yeah, that's where I'm going with this. So, my thought is Andy grew up and he made a Buzz Lightyear movie. Based on the cartoon and toy line that he loved as a 90s kid. And he made it a dark and gritty and super serious movie. Based on the goofy toy line that he loved when he was 12. And there's a lot you could do with that premise. I would guess I'm, I'm, I'm wrong on that, but uh, that seems like an interesting way to take it. I mean, it doesn't seem to be... This was the movie that Andy saw when he was 12 years old or whatever in the 90s. Because if you were going to go that direction... This, this was the big Buzz Lightyear movie that came out in the world of Toy Story in the 90s that spawned the TV series and the toy line. That makes sense, but... Then they had really good special effects for... For the for that that era, I mean this this looks like a modern blockbuster. I just think it would be really funny if they were going that direction. Like this was the movie that Andy saw in the the nineties of the world of Toy Story, but for from our the audience eyes, it's a CG animated movie. So everything we see is it's CG animated, but like all the aliens are are, are really like very early nineties CG like like the abyss level cg you know um the effects are just really bad <laughs> even though the whole film from our perspective is a computer generated movie the movie actually has just really bad spaceship and alien effects <laughs> that could be really fun that doesn't appear to be what they're doing so my money is on uh, andy is just taking the yeah you know, he he's probably just one of those insufferable twitter douchebags who takes the stuff he loved as a child way too friggin' seriously. Like, um... Uh, like, uh, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, this is, this is tonally a, a bit discordant from the spirit of the toy line and the show that it was based on, or the toy line was it, whichever came first. Uh, Andy, are you sure you want to make it that... Gritty and serious. Yeah, Buzz Lightyear's awesome, and he and he kills people, and he and he has sex. <laughs> I'm calling it uh, uh, Lightyear. The movie from Pixar is going to be the first Pixar film with a sex scene in it. So, um, let's see. Uh, Chicago, sa uh, Chicago says, not an actual person in the movies like Woody is based on a TV character. Right, right, right. Chicago likes my idea, I'm glad. So, I'm I I'm interested to, to see how this movie fits in the world of Toy Story. Is it supposed to be an old movie? It doesn't appear to be. Is it supposed to be a real, per you know, a real person in the world of Toy Story? Doesn't appear to be. Is it a modern revival of an old IP that seems more likely and I think there there's a lot of interesting stuff you could mine out of there and how we regard um, 
our cherished childhood IPs. There's a, there's a, you know, from, from the fans who take it too seriously to the, the corporate people who are just cashing in on an IP name that they just happen to own and don't give the slightest poop about it. Um, toxic fandom could be an angle you could go with. There's a lot of stuff you could do with that premise. So I'm, I don't know what they're doing, but I'm certainly interested to find out. Uh, Chicago says, kind of like 60s era TV Batman series spawned Chris Nolan Batman trilogy. Uh, campy versus darker, ignore the movies in between. Yeah, well, there's, there's really no wrong way to, to, to do an adaptation, right? Um, Batman the 60s TV series was an adaptation of the comics that had at the time been around for 30 years. Um, and started uh, pretty goofy and then had some serious phases and then got goofy again and then you had camp and then you had a bit more serious. And, you know, it's, it's fine. It's fine. You know, just have a vision, you know, and don't get angry about stuff. That Especially stuff that doesn't matter. I mean, someone taking away your you know, your freedoms and rights, that's stuff to get angry about, you, you know. Um, but is someone making an adaptation of um, a childhood favorite that's not aimed at you? It's disappointing, sure, but... Like... Maybe the next adaptation will be aimed at you. Um... Alright. Speaking of, uh adaptations or in this case a continuation of a beloved 80s property I also saw the trailer for he-man i'm sorry no masters of the universe revelations part two the second part of the he-man show on netflix the one that doesn't look like skylanders the one that's actually a continuation of the 80s show I enjoyed the first five episodes. I thought it was fun. Do I think it works if you don't already have a love for the Masters of the Universe? No. It's it it's riding the nostalgia train pretty hard. Uh, if you have no love for uh, Masters of the Universe, you'll probably watch it and go, eh, it's fine. But if you do have a love for the Masters of the Universe, and you played with all the toys, and you still have them in several boxes in your closet, then you go, ooh, it's Buzz Off! Ooh, it's Fisto! I have these toys! <laughs> I have them all! Um, that's part of the fun of the show. So I, I enjoyed the first five episodes of the Masters of the Universe revel Revelation, or Revelations. I think it's singular. Revelation. Uh, anyway, so the second half is uh, coming out, and they had a trailer, and it appears to give away like everything maybe not everything but way more than I, I i think it should have granted have you seen shows and movies before you could probably guess where this was going you know oh he-man's not really dead yeah obviously <laughs> you know um oh uh tila will still have a function in the narrative yeah <laughs> obviously I, I mean so I, I i guess i can't be too upset because i kind of figured most of this stuff would happen but i don't know it's the second half so I don't think you really have to sell people on it anymore. They're either into it or they're not. There's a fine line when making a trailer. On one side of the line, a very fine line. Ooh, ooh, that line is fine. On one side of this very fine line is not providing enough information to hook audiences. You're too vague. People come away from the trailer going, okay, sure, but what's the premise? What What's it about? What what happens? Not like, what are every single plot beats, but 
what is the movie? On the other side of this incredibly fine line is showing so much that I feel I've already watched it and am less inclined to actually watch it now. I feel that the trailer for Masters of the Universe Revelation Part 2 is on that side of the line. I feel they went... Uh, it, it feels... they. I almost am like, yeah, okay, now I have no need to watch the show because you've confirmed that every beat that I figured would happen, yeah, that happens. I'm, st I'm still going to watch it. But I would have preferred they you know, pick one thing and hammer on that for a minute and a half. No need to spoil what seems like it could be everything. There is an art to making trailers. I would say that the uh, he uh, Masters of the Universe Revelation Part 2 trailer is bad art. <laughs> So let us move on, friends, to another trailer. This trailer for a video game. A mobile game. Our favorite platform to play games. That's presumptuous. I hate mobile games. And it's not because I'm the type of gamer who's like, Ah, mobile games are all the same. They're all gotcha traps and they're all... There's only one type of mobile games, and they're all that, and I don't like it. No, there's there's lots of different types of games. It's kind of like people who don't like anime, and when they mean I don't like anime, they mean I don't like this specific few anime tropes that are admittedly very common, but is not descriptive of the entire medium. I don't like mobile games because... I don't like playing on my phone or or my switch. Yeah, the 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 Joy-Cons are not on because I've been playing Fitness Boxing 2, uh which I'll talk about shortly. So, Pikmin Bloom is the latest game from Niantic who uh, last um graced us with uh, Pokemon Go. <laughs> Chicago says, uh, mobile games have horrible controls, no precision. It depends on the game, and uh, yeah, if, if you're trying to play, like, Call of Duty on your phone with, like, touchscreen controls, that's an ask. But, I mean, if you're playing, like, little uh, puzzle games, works fine. You know, games that are built specifically for... You know what I thought actually worked just fine was Mario Run. I was like, this is actually a Mario game that's built specifically for mobile, and it works just fine. Still don't want to play it on my phone, but it's it's a fine game. Works just fine. So, it really depends on the game. And it's kind of like the, oh, I can't stand keyboard and mouse, or, oh, I, I must have keyboard and mouse can't use controller again depends on the game you know if I'm playing um, P cross that's arguably better with a mouse or a touch screen rather than a you know controller where you're moving the cursor around the screen to fill in the little squares it works a little cumbersome so it really comes down to what the game is. So, Pikmin Bloom. There was a trailer. It was five minutes. Hi, Scrungle. I haven't seen you in a while. Hope you're well. Talking about Pikmin Bloom. And Pikmin Bloom had a trailer, and that trailer was five minutes. How much game footage do you think they packed into that five-minute Pikmin Bloom trailer? It depends on how you count. Ten seconds. Again, depends on how you count. 
if you said I timed it, it was 15. Oh, you're, you're counting the static screen in front? Sure, fine. That's fair. 15 seconds. My completely irrelevant opinion is that if you have a five minute trailer for a video game and instead of showing footage from the video game you feel compelled to jam pack it with talking heads and a pre-rendered commercial that is not the least bit representative of the game itself your game's probably shit and you should probably go back to the drawing board. Like, if your game is so uninteresting looking that you're like, Oh, we shouldn't actually show the game in our game trailer. Because then no one will buy it. That's likely a problem. Now, I can imagine that some games are just really hard to show off what makes them great in a TV commercial. Some things you just have to experience. So I think Pikmin Bloom looks uh, kind of crap. Also, I came out of the trailer going, um, is that it? So, in Pikmin Bloom, if I'm understanding this five minute commercial correctly, it tracks your steps as you walk around on a map like Pokemon Go. So you, you get like a overhead Google map and you have your little me that's standing on the Google map and as you walk around the neighborhood, your character walks around the neighborhood and flowers bloom behind you. And that's it. Cool. Oh, you can also see... I I'm guessing that you also see flower paths from other Pikmin Bloom players, so to let's just cover the world in flowers? Okay. Now, the commercial did say something about, like, and you can grow your Pikmin. You can, like, plant your Pikmin and unplant them to grow them, but it didn't show how that works in game. You just see people with a CG generated pot of Pikmin and pulling the Pikmin out. I'm like, great. That has nothing to do with the game though. That's just an actor in a commercial playing with a CG Pikmin. What what's the actual game do? Do you do you literally just go for a walk and it draws flowers on a map? Is that it? If that's not it, maybe you should say so in this five minute long commercial. So, I look at this and go, well that's going to be an absolute failure. But, they advertise Pokemon Go exactly the same way. And that was a massive success. So I don't know shit. <laughs> you know, uh, th this this could be the next big thing. Probably not. Uh, mainly because, at least you know, Pokemon Go at least has the. You walk around the neighborhood, and there's a Pokemon, and there's hundreds of Pokemon, and you flick a little ball at the Pokemon, and try to catch the Pokemon. Cool. That's something. And there's a collecting thing there. But there's only like six different Pikmin types. I... Really the thing that bothers me most is in five minutes... I Maybe I'm just dense and don't get it. But in five minutes I was like, I, I don't understand what the game is. Unless all you do is walk around and it draws flowers on a map. Uh, let's see, what are we talking about in here? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Hey Andrew, buy Fatal Frame. It's a good spooky game. Uh, the Maiden of... Dark water? Cold water? Something. Uh, the one that was on Wii U and they never dropped the price on, so I never bought it. Uh, yeah, I'll have to check it out. I played the demo and I thought it was kind of 
kind of interesting. So uh, now that it's actually available on all the other platforms, uh, if it uh, drops to a decent price, I'll probably take a look at it. Uh, Voice of Cards Isle of Dragon Roar actually came out a couple days ago. That's another one I, I would actually... I'd like to... Uh, too busy right now, but I... I demoed that on a Sunday stream a couple weeks ago. I, I, was, I was into it. I, I think I'll probably uh, pick that one up. Uh, Momo says, I downloaded that game right now. Great. Let me know how it is and if you actually do anything in it. Uh, it's like, well, Andrew, why don't you just download the game and see? Uh, was not available in my country right after the... Um, I think it was available in like Australia and another country right after that uh, trailer premiered. I think it has since rolled out to North America, but um, which is a continent, not a country, so USA, but um, <clears throat> I don't know. And I like Pikmin. Oh. Is this Pikmin 4? You know, the, the game that apparently has been done for a while. <laughs> um... So, uh, Pikmin Bloom. I don't get it. And maybe it's because I'm just a dense goofball. I don't know. So, um, last couple of days I've been playing Fitness Boxing 2. Uh, which if we raise... I don't know, I think it's $600 uh, for the Extra Life Charity event. We're at three twenty-five right now, and we still have a... And we're still a week out, so... Um, I think it's $600 I'll play a Fitness Boxing 2 on the uh, Charity Marathon. And you can watch me get all sweaty and disgusting. Won't that be fun? And my sister will be here, and we'll try not to accidentally punch each other. That'll be fun, too. So... My international fans will be amused to know that when the game starts up, it says, Okay, uh, fill out your profile. Give us your height and weight. And I said, Okay, I'm six foot. And it goes, Oh, no, 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 no. Centimeters, buddy. I'm like, Oh. Oh. Oh, shoot. Like 180-something? <laughs> Calculator. Do, 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 do. All right. All right, what's your weight? 200... No, 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 kilograms. I don't know. <laughs> Who uses kilograms? Other than everyone else in the world. 90-something. I'm like, ah, oh, god damn, what's this, like 2.2 or some fucking... That's, no, fine, 96. Um, so, yeah, uh, American struggling with the metric system. <laughs> Uh, Momo says, uh, Pikmin Bloom, pretty much just a step counter with a little something to do and look forward to, I guess. Uh, figured it would download it since I do cardio every day. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you go for walks or runs or something, uh, could be a fun little thing. I, I, I the, again, the biggest pro I'm not, like, antagonistic towards Pikmin Bloom. I'm antagonistic towards the trailer because I feel left out. I don't understand it, and it, it can't be my problem. It's gotta be you. <laughs> So, uh, Lindy says, yeah, all of us. The rest of the world uses kilograms. <laughs> Centimeters, kilograms. Who uses that? Everyone, Andrew. <laughs> Everyone other than you, goofballs. Seriously, is America, like, the last place on Earth that uses the imperial system rather than metrics? Is there any other country that actually does that? There's got to be one. We're not alone, right? Um, anyway. But I can use a calculator. So I was able to uh, fill out my profile and um, start the game. And then I went into the settings menu just to see what was in there. And you can change the units of measure uh, from metric to imperial. Maybe I missed something, but... I don't think you can get there until after you've filled out your profile. I mean, you you can skip filling out your profile, but it is kind of interesting to me that they say, "All right, give us your height and weight in centimeters and um, and kilograms," and then they don't actually tell you this. I just I always check the the settings and options just to see what's in there, 
yeah, there is a toggle for that. So if if you if you really can't hack the conversion factors, you you, you can give it in inches or uh, pounds. Um. <clears throat> So how is um so uh, why am I playing fitness boxing too instead of just leaving it for the stream? Well, one just familiarizing myself with the game so I know how to add my sister into it so we can play two player during the stream. Uh but also to unlock stuff cuz when you start there's like jabs only, <laughs> you know. So I'm like, okay, I'll play the game for a week so that I can unlock, you know, all the jabs, all the hooks, all the crosses. Um and the, the more interesting combos. Because it would be kind of boring for my sister just to sit there throwing jabs all night. Um, uh, also, I'm unlocking costumes for the trainers. So we can pick a trainer uh, and, and dress them up all fancy. So, um, how's the game? It's... Fine. It's adequate. It feels minimum effort to me. What I mean by that is um, <clears throat> there are like eight, maybe ten trainers in the game. Uh, nice diverse cast. Um, it, you know, different looks, different sizes, different body types. It's great. Uh, you've you've got you know petite trainers and you've got big bulky muscular ones and everything in between. So it's a nice variety of trainers. I like that. They all have their own outfits and the outfits look really good, like that. Each uh, each trainer's fully voiced and they have their own voice actor. Cool. So far as I've seen, every single trainer uses the same animation rig and animations. Okay. The scripts for all the trainers, so far as I've seen, exactly the same. They do have a couple bespoke lines of dialogue. For example, when they introduce themselves or when you switch trainers or when you go into the dress-up menu, they do have unique lines of dialogue. But during the training, um, it's exactly the same. The animations are exactly the same. And the dialogue is exactly the same. Delivered with a unique voice. So the inflections are different, but it's exactly the same. So it doesn't really give the characters as much of a unique personality as I think they could have. Um, <clears throat> the routines are pretty well done. The motion control is as accurate as you would expect it to be. Which is not great. I mean, seriously... It, uh, it it cannot tell the difference between a jab or a cross or an uppercut. You could just, as long as you're throwing it with the right, with the correct hand, you hold one Joy-Con in one hand, one Joy-Con in the other, and you physically punch. This is the same as this, is the same as this. I think it's just registering a movement and a stop. I, I don't think it cares about anything else. So, really... If you want to get anything out of this game, you have to put into it. You're only going to get out what you put into it, so to speak. That said, the actual routines are fine. The combos they come up with are, are flow well and are creative. I like that. But here's another what feels like minimal effort to me. When you decide to do your daily training. Uh, it starts with a warm-up, then you have three or four exercise sets... And then a cooldown. In Ring Fit Adventure, the warm up and cooldowns uh, were built dynamically on the fly from a pool of maybe a dozen different stretches and warm ups and cooldowns. So every time you did a, a warm up or a cooldown, it would be a little bit different. Seemingly, it would, n not completely random, but if you focused more on legs, it would do more leg stretches, that kind of a thing. Fitness Boxing 2, the warm-up is the cooldown. It is exactly the same thing. Same exact exercises, every single time, 
in the exact same order for both the warm up and the cool down. Also, the last exercise for warm up and cool down is loosening your joints, basically just going, you know, shaking out your wrists and shaking out your legs. I know you can't really see what I'm doing, but you know, shaking out your wrists and, and ankles. And the dialogue for the instructor, all three instructors I've I've trained with so far, is something like, "All right, let's warm up the hands and feet," which they say regardless of whether this is the warm up or the cool down, which is kind of an odd thing to do or say during a cool down. Let's warm up the ankles and wrists because we're done. Also, the warm-up slash cool-down is mistimed because the last three seconds are dead air. Uh, let's warm up the wrists and ankles. Okay. Three. Two. Wait, there's still three seconds on the timer and the, the um, uh, trainer just stares dead at the camera, unmoving for three seconds because it was mistimed. That's what I mean when I say Fitness Boxing 2 feels minimal effort. Which is unfortunate. Because I think if you're into cardio and um, boxing, um, you know, rhythm boxing, I, I think it's, uh, it's not overly flashy. The, the music could be better. The music also feels really, really low effort. I mean, it's fine but it's the the various sets are minimalist which is probably how it should be so you can focus on the the note highways or the punch highways i suppose um but it just feels like no one really cares ring fit adventure feels like they really cared about this there was a lot of effort put into that you can tell this one Eh. Eh, you got boxers. Eh, we'll just use the same animation rig for all of them. We'll use the same script for all of them. Eh, they have a few unique options when you go into dress-up mode, but otherwise, same damn script. Uh, same animations, same script. Uh, no need to make unique uh, cool-down exercise. Just duplicate the warm-up thing. It's fine. You know? I don't know if this is a $60 game. I got it for 40 Hopefully... It was never sold for anything more than that because it's not worth more than that. So it's a little disappointing. Um, it it could be better, but maybe it's a cost benefit analysis. It's like we're only going to sell X amount, so it's not worth our time and effort to do any better. It's not bad. It's fine. It it does what it's it sets out to do, but no more than that. And if we raise um, $600 uh, for the charity event, uh, you'll get to see my sister and I uh, jab, cross, jab, hook, uppercutting. Or whatever. And that'll that'll be fun. Uh, if you actually, uh, as far as exercise, um, if you actually do the exercises, you'll get your heart rate up and you will sweat. And your shoulders will probably get sore. Throw on like a weight vest and some uh, wrist weights and yeah. Yeah. Momo says, I have the first game. It sounds exactly the same. No reason to buy the second one at all. Yeah, I don't have the first game. So I figured, and the, the first game was like $6 cheaper. So I'm like, may as well buy the new one. I think there's two new trainers and just different music. And that's about it. I don't know if the the the, the I, I don't think the two player mode is new to the second game. It it seems like they they could have just released new trainer DLC or new music packs for the first game. It it, it feels a bit cash grabby. Like yeah, I, I I don't know what the difference much there doesn't seem to be much different. If you own the first game, yeah I don't think there's really much reason to get the uh, second game unless they added like kickboxing right like in addition to um, 
I, I'm way too tall, um, way too close to the camera. Uh, so in addition to you know your straight uh, hook, well this is jab, straight hook, uppercut. They also did, you know, front kicks and side kicks and back, you know, to add kicks into it. It's like, oh, what are you going to do? Get another group of Joy-Cons and strap them to your ankles? I mean, I guess you could, but who cares? The game's not that accurate anyway, <laughs> you know? Um, eh, it's fine. It's fine. Benedict. Benedict? Bernardo, Barry, that's a big dude. Like his, like the, one of the trainers, like super huge muscular guy, has to stand like this, because otherwise his arms would clip into his torso. I have him set up to a uh, train with tomorrow. I've I've gone through three uh, trainers so far. I'm gonna try to at least get through all of them before the uh, charity event. Um, so, yeah. All right, so, um, Arnold. Yeah. Uh, he, actually, he's the, uh, I think there are three dudes and seven dudettes, I, I, I think is how it shakes out. Um, the two other dudes are so unbelievably bland that I can't remember what they look like. Like, I can... Like, all of the women have their own unique look and style. And, and... Bernard... Bernard? Bernard. And Bernard. He, you know, brick shithouse of a man. Man who can't put his arms down because he's too muscular. He leaves an impression. The other two dudes are like Blandy McBlanderson and his twin <laughs> you know may i haven't i haven't selected them yet but maybe they're very personable i i don't i don't know all right um so i finished watching a couple things i debut reviewed in the last couple of months squid game and brand new cherry flavor both of which i feel drop the ball in the final episodes in some ways Squid Game is um, well overall impressions I enjoyed both shows to an extent I did not regret my time with either and I thought they were both fine with a lot of singular elements that stuck out and I thought were pretty cool Squid Game, um, I feel narratively drops the ball in a couple of places. My biggest issue with Squid Game, and I mentioned this in the debut review, I don't like the main character, like as a person. He sucks. And he never stops sucking. I never got on his side. So... Yeah. So, so so that that made the ending particularly tough to enjoy. Um I mean, uh, uh sorry, uh spoilers, the main character wins. Spoilers, Katniss Everdeen wins the Hunger Games. Spoilers, the good guys win. It's pretty rare when the main characters, like, don't win. So, the, our uh, Gary, he still sucks. He just sucks. They do a lot to try and make him a, a really nice, personal guy, but he really, he sucks. He's he's a sucky person, and I don't like him. So that made the ending kind of hard to enjoy. But there are also a couple other things where. I, I found Squid Game was not very realistic. Um, so, four hundred and fifty-six people enter the Squid Games, in which all they know is you play children's games for money. 
Lots and lots of money. What they don't know is if you lose, you die. Well, after the first game, I think 212 of them are left. And they're like, hey, one of the rules was uh, we can vote. Uh, if majority votes to stop the games, we can all go home. So they vote. And it, it ended up being can't coming down to one singular vote. So it was just over half. So um, if one person had voted differently, they would have had to stay. But uh, even after finding out, oh crap, we can all die, half of them still wanted to stay. Huh. I mean, I'm not surprised there were some. But I was surprised that it would be cl even close to half. Then again, I am constantly surprised. Uh, I live in America. Um, I am the United States. I am constantly surprised at just how many people in this country are terrible people. I, I keep underestimating the sheer number of bad people. Just really awful people. So, uh, that's probably a me problem. Well, uh, so the 212 people who survived the first game go home. But then the Squid Game people say, hey, you can come back if you want. If you want, you can come back. I'm not surprised that some went back. But apparently, almost all of them went back. Like, I think only 20 people didn't come back. Really? Really? Now, I can totally imagine that some of the people say, I, I'm being chased by loan sharks. The mafia is going to kill me. I'm definitely going to die on the outside. My only chance, no matter how remote, for survival is, to, is in the squid games. A lot of people are in that situation. Okay. But 200 people? Really? 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 Huh. Really? Huh. So 20 people decide not to come back and, uh, you know, the, the Grand Master of the Squid Game says something like, I want them monitored. And that's never brought up again. Not that it's terribly important, but... Would have been interested to... Do, do you kill these people? Big, uh, big, you know, our hero goes to the police. I was kidnapped in the Squid Games and they murder people, la, 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 and they don't believe him. Not surprising. But, I mean, if nearly 200 people, like, went to the police, it's like, yeah, th this guy came in and was talking about a Squid Game, yeah. Well, that's funny, because we've had dozens of people all over South Korea in all kinds of different precincts talking about this. Was he the only one who went to the police? That's hard to believe. Huh. Huh. So there's a, a side plot with a uh, a police officer who sneaks into the Sid, Squid get Sid games, the game of Sid, uh, the Squid Games, and d disguises himself as one of the organizers. The guys in the pink jumpsuits with the shape on their face, um, <clears throat> and because uh, he's looking for his brother. Now I may have got something wrong here. I hope so. I hope I just was sneezing at the time and, and missed a crucial bit of information but what I picked up from the show was the cop guy was looking for his brother who recently went missing and he sees our hero in the police station talking about the squid game he sees the little phone card with the shapes on it and he's like oh well that's weird so he goes to what I think was his brother's house and he looks around and he finds that card and he's like oh gosh so he confronts Gary, and Gary says, uh, go away. So he follows Gary 
to the Squid Games, and that's how he sneaks in. So, my impression is that his brother went missing like a couple of days ago, and there's a good chance maybe he died in the first game, or maybe he's still in the games, or... Shouldn't he... Uh, I, I mean, he would have come back, right? So, he, he probably died in the first game. And that's what he's going to find out. But what he finds out is that his brother actually won the Squid Game years ago. Where's he been? Did Has he been missing for years? If he's been missing for years, why is that card in... Have, I, has he not been home in all that time? Where the hell is he? Turns out he's the guy running the Squid Games. Okay. So... So he won the Squid Game years ago and he... D did he never go home? I would think that once the Squid Games are over each year, he goes home, right? Why does he live in a crap apartment? Why did he get one of those little business cards? I have to have missed something here. So anyway, he confronts his brother, and who shoots him in the shoulder, and he falls off a cliff, and that's the end of that storyline. Did he die? Dunno. Did 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 he did his notes and video footage and pictures get through? Dunno. It kind of feels like they had no idea what to do with that plot line and just drop kicked it out of the show it's certainly a dangling thread that they could pick up in season two if they wanted but uh as it is it was kind of confusing and unsatisfying to me so um penultimate game the hopscotch bridge okay so there are like um so they're in another high, pl like the tug of war thing. Uh, they're in a high place where if you fall, you die, right? Okay, so you have to cross a bridge and get to the other side. The bridge is made up of 18 pairs of panels, glass panels. On one side is tempered glass that will support your weight, and on the other side is regular glass that you will crash through if you try to step on it. So you basically have to go, okay, first set of glass panes, which one's the tempered one, and jump on it, and then keep guessing right all the way to the end. And they draw lots to see what order they're going in. So if you go first, you are definitely going to die. I don't know what 2 to the 18th is, but that's a very big number. Those are crap odds. You're not, you're going to die. If you're in, like, the first half, you're gonna die. It is almost guaranteed that you're going to die. Flip a coin. Get heads. Got a 50-50 chance. Okay. Flip heads twice in a row. Well, that's a 1 in 4 chance. Flip heads 18 times in a row. Yeah, we're in 1 into the hundreds of thousands now. So... If you're in the front of the line, you going to die. Is Squid Game... Uh, Bert Holiday. Yeah, new person. Hello. Uh, is Squid Game doing two seasons? I would imagine so. Uh, I hear that Squid Game Season 1 did very, very well for Netflix. So, um, I would imagine we will be seeing more. And the show ends in a way that certainly would oblige a, a new season. Um, I didn't like this game. It's visually kind of interesting, but it's also really reminiscent of the tug-of-war thing from just falling from a high place, you know? Still, um, the problem I had with the game is... All of the games, everyone could win. This one, if you're in the front of the line, you can't win. It's impossible. Almost. I mean, there's like a 1 in 700,000 shot that 
you you guess 18 coin flips in a row correctly that's not happening though uh and it doesn't so it's kind of a kind of a boring one because it's like well what's gonna happen over half of them are gonna die at best only half of them will die going you know because you're gonna have a like a, a a bell curve if you plot out the the probability there um so um so it's not that fun of a game because there's also it, it kind of bothered me that no one tried anything like i don't know stand on the rails on either side of the glass or at least try not to jump in the dead center of the glass. Wasn't explicitly against the rules. I mean, they'd probably still shoot you. <laughs> but uh, worth a try, you're definitely going to die otherwise. You may as well, you know, because uh, it's like in the second game with the, the candy thing. Uh, they didn't say you had to use the needle. And uh, some people have figured out that you can lick through the candy. That worked. They didn't shoot him for that. So try that. But here's what gets me about that game. There, there's, I think, 16 people uh, going after the, the bridge challenge, right? And they're going in a certain order. 18 panels. Which means that prob the, the most likely scenario is half of them die. The, the people in the front of the line, definitely going to die. I'm genuinely surprised that at no point did any of them, did like the guy in the front of the line go, I, anyone want to take a vote now? I'd like to vote that we stop now. Now the per, the, the people in the, the, like the last few, I could buy say, well the last few are our heroes, because they survive of course. They would pro, but the people in the back of the line, they might go, no, I, I've got a pretty good shot at winning this one. But yeah, the first half... They're probably definitely going to die. Cause did they all forget that they could vote? Was there a sub clause somewhere that says they can't do two votes? You only get one vote, and that you can't do that again. I, I don't know. It just didn't work for me. Visually, it was interesting. Um, also, they they did this bullshit where one of the guy, one of the guys, worked in a glass factory, so he could recognize tempered glass. And they turn the lights off on him so that he can't actually see the glass. It's like, well, then what's the point? You may as well have them play Russian roulette, you know? Um, I mean, the, almost the same thing with the tug of war. The tug of war game guarantees half of them will die. You'd think that they'd be like, oh, let's vote. Anyone want to take a 50-50? I mean, I know that this this crew right here, which is our physically weakest... All of you are definitely voting to get out of here. How about the marble one? I'm amazed that the... Um, you know, they split up into teams. And they play against each other. So one per only one person in each team can survive. Well, the married couple ends up on a one-person team. So one of them has to die. Which the show kind of seemed to forget about <laughs> until the next episode, and it's like, oh yeah, those two. Oh shoot, probably should have, uh, probably should have addressed that. Yeah, she died. We're not gonna. We tried writing the scene, and nothing seemed to work. So we'll leave it up to your imagination. Also, the numbers don't add up. They're missing like three people. I I, I don't know. Maybe a couple of people tried to run and got shot. I I don't know what happened there, but. Um, I'm surprised that the uh, married couple didn't say, Hey, we really don't want to kill each other. Let's take a vote here. Did, did everyone literally forget about that rule? That you, all, that you actually all did once? Weird. Huh. <sighs> Still an entertaining show. I still enjoyed it. The last game, of course, is Squid Game, which 
I from the very start of the show, I was like, the last game's probably going to be the Squid Game, and that's going to be really problematic, and it is, because that game isn't fun to watch and doesn't make a whole hell of a lot of sense. And, uh, of course, when it gets down to the, the final game, it's less about the game and more about the final two characters. So, But, uh, I mean, the show does do... It, it comes up with some interesting scenarios. The games are fun. The, the, the It's appropriately tense. It um, has some good gore. Um, these kind of scenarios are always fun. Oh gosh, what would I do kind of thing. Uh, so it, it's not bad. I just don't think it's as good as others do. But I'd still watch a second season. Even though I, do, I don't like the lead guy. Who sucks. He's just, a, he's just a crap... Per he's just genuinely an awful person. I don't like him. As much as the show tries to make him into a hero and a, just a, a person who's genuinely good heart, no, he still sucks. I still don't like him. I should probably explain why. I don't like him because he never thinks about anyone other than himself. Oh, when you point that out to him, he feels really bad, and he'll cry. But until you actually call him on his selfish horseshit, he is completely self-centered throughout the entire show. Before the Squid Games, during the Squid Games, after the Squid Games. It's all about him. But he'll feel really bad, really bad, if you point that out to him. Screw Gary. Uh, brand new cherry flavor. Drops the ball in um, a different way. Again, subjective opinion. Uh, Battle Angel Alita never returns Boro's cat. I, I, I think that's the biggest takeaway from the show. Uh, the witch gives Battle Angel Alita her cat and says... Okay, just I'm gonna hold my cat, then bring me my cat tomorrow. She never brings her her cat. I think that's why everybody die. Everyone who dies dies. If she would have just brought her damn cat back. I think everything would have been fine, honestly. So our hero, um, the ending is not bad but it is kind of unsatisfying because our hero who's not really heroic but our protagonist gets what she wants many lives were lost along the way but she gets what she wants and then just goes home I guess she decides that it's not what she wanted, or it's not worth it, or she's just like, ah, screw this amount. Maybe? I mean, there's a couple of ways to interpret it, but uh, it's just kind of unsatisfying. I, I guess she's fine. She just goes home. She's like, nah, I'm, I'm done. Bye. The witch takes over another woman's body and just moves on. Okay. Uh, okay. I don't know how she took over the other person's body. Um, it was established that there's a bit of a ritual going on. Did, did the other woman agree to the ritual? It required having sex. Who'd she have sex with? And why didn't I get to watch? Darn it. Was she lying about the ritual? Maybe. Lied about a lot of things. But if she was lying about the ritual, why didn't she just take over Battle Angel Alita in the first place? Again, maybe I missed a crucial plot detail somewhere, and what is confusing to me is obvious to everyone else who was paying attention. 
I don't know. Might have missed something. That happens. But overall, I think the show was longer than it needed to be. I think it could have been condensed a little bit, you know. Um, but it had some fun stuff in it. it. had some nice, fun, weird, gooey things going on, you know, barfing up cats and, you know, and some guy had a really long worm in his eye that they slowly pulled out <laughs> over the course of a, like a minute, just constant, just, just like a magician pulling the tide colored cloth out of something, just pulling this worm out of his eyeball. So, so there's some great stuff like that in there, but I found the ending just kind of, oh, Okay, so she goes home and the witch gets a new body and goes on to do witchy things and pretty much everyone else is dead except the victim of her curse who's not dead, his son's dead, um, he's just blind because he had worms in his eyes. He's an asshole. A fictional character in a movie? Yeah. He deserved that fate, because screw that guy. Eh. It's fine. I, I you know, I wasn't sad I watched it, but uh I was um ill impressed with the endings to both Squid Game and Brand New Cherry Flavor. Oh well. And that's all I've got for you lovely people on this fine, fine Halloween Eve. Um, so that's it for the podcast tonight. Uh, tomorrow is Halloween, and we will be having a Sunday stream. Starts at noon Pacific Standard Time, and I will be playing Resident Evil 3, the, the remake one, the, the new one that came out in the last year or so. Um... I know that apparently is not everyone's favorite, but it's the one I'm playing tomorrow. So, uh, join me tomorrow, noon Pacific Standard Time, for some Resident Evil 3 fun on Halloween. Uh, bring snacks for yourself, because uh, internet technology is not to the point where you can share them with me. And that would probably be kind of insanitary anyway, so, you know, don't take candy from strangers over the internet. Glad we had this talk. All right. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Hope to see you tomorrow for the Sunday stream. Until then, have a good night. Bye-bye.